Hello and welcome to 2P04 Lecture 14, Frame Problems. So frames are members which in general have forces besides just the pin connections at their ends. In frame problems we generally need to draw free body diagrams for each frame rather than just the pins connecting them and then apply static equilibrium to each frame using the free body diagram. This is going to give force equations and torque equations in general. Now we're gonna uh, we're gonna go through this by looking at four different problems, all from Engineer 2 PO4. This is really uh, where we get into a lot of the heavy static stuff in this course. You should be able to do a lot of these uh, just by uh, by giving them a shot before even looking at the answers. There's gonna be a couple of hints with two force members and. Uh, and new concepts that you may not have been familiar with, but it's uh, it's stuff that you may be able to guess ahead of time. So I encourage you to give it a shot before looking at the answers as we go through them. This is going to take you probably a fair bit of time to go through uh, because of the the math involved and the equations to set up. But there's not a whole lot to explain. So the this is one example where the video is kind of short, but the working through it will take a while. Okay. So problem set two, number six, a curved bar is loaded and supported as shown in figure six. That's this one right here. That bar has a uniform cross section and a mass of 75 kilograms. So this time we can't ignore the mass of the bar. Determine the reactions at supports A, a pin support, and B, which is a link. So we're looking at the reactions on this frame. G is the bar center of mass. They've located that for us and shown us where it is relative to the rest of the bar. Okay, so what we want to do is draw a free body diagram for this member. Here's an example of that. You can also label the distances in the free body diagram if you like. So, pin support A can supply X and Y forces, but it can't supply torques. And link B is a two force member, it's a truss, so it can only apply a force axially, which tells us what the direction of the force is. It may actually be the opposite direction to this, so it may end up being in compression. We've drawn it as if it's in tension, but at least we know which way it's uh, it's going so that we can draw it like this and then maybe it's negative. Okay, so force balance equations, some of the forces in the x direction on the entire structure, not too involved. Forces in the y direction, there's more forces taking place. You'll notice that because they gave us the length of the sides of this triangle, we have a bit of an easier time uh, writing out what the X and Y components are without even needing to use trig. We can just use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that is. And so we can write our force and torque balance equations. And then if you like, you could solve these three equations in three unknowns. The rest is just math. You can sub that into maple with some solve commands. We're going to do that explicitly in the future examples. Here's the results that you should get. Okay, next problem. This is from problem set three, number six. It's a little bit more involved than the previous one. So here we've got we've got uh, four different members. We've got this first frame A, B, C, D. We've got uh, frame B, E, F. We've got frame C, E. And we've got this pulley. And there's uh, there's some loading at the end. So we've got some some strings with tension, we've got all the distances involved, and we are asked to figure out the components of all the forces acting on these different members. So we need to figure out all the reaction forces, and we're told that there's uh, possibly some two force members, so we need to identify those. The way you want to do this is draw the free body diagrams for each member, write the static equilibrium equations for each member, and then solve the equations. All right, so here's the free body diagrams. We've got uh, a lot of forces on member A, B, C, D. We've got not quite as many on B, E, F, less on the pulley. And then the, the member with the least forces is member C, E. This has only two reaction forces on it, which makes it a two force member. And so, uh, so how this works is the forces on this pin have to be both have to be uh, balanced by the forces on this pin, which means they have to be equal and opposite, and also collinear, because if they're not collinear, so imagine the force CE points, imagine up, and the force uh, force on this pin, force on, force on pin C points up, force on pin E points down, then we'd have a couple, and so this member would rotate, and we don't want that. It's gotta be in static equilibrium, which means the forces have to be equal and opposite and collinear. So that tells us the direction of the forces, and we can, 
basically treat member CE like it's a truss connecting these. From the yeah, from the perspective of the forces that we find on the pins, it's identical to that situation. The only difference is by having it in this elbow bracket joint, then the internal forces in the in that frame are going to be different. But from the external perspective, the forces on it are not are not changed by the fact that it's an elbow joint versus a truss. So we've got, if you add them up, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine different forces and uh, different force unknowns and we also have an angle unknown and we can figure out the angle unknown from the trig here and we can figure out the force unknowns by applying the force in the x y and the torque equation for member a b c d b e f and the pulley that's your next job so here's what you should get on the pulley member b e f and ABCD. You can solve these with maple just like we did in lecture 13. Now I'll point out that if we uh, if, if you don't give the solve command an equation so in, in this example you just gave it T minus 3.924 it assumes you mean 0 equals so that you can save a little bit of time in uh, in subbing all of these into maple by not having to write all of that. Alright and there's our answer. Next practice problem, this is number seven from the problem set number three, again in Engineer 2 po 4 This is a frame and we've got this interesting support here. So the only new thing in this problem is which uh, is, is figuring out the force direction at pin C. So this is a slider joint. If you look at it, the, the member is free to slide along the length of ACF. And so if it's in static equilibrium, you can think about which way the force at pin C has to be. Okay, so again you want to draw FBDs for each member and then write the static equilibrium equilibrium equations for each member and then solve the equations. So the reaction force at pin C has to be perpendicular to that slider joint because it can't apply force in the direction of the slider joint. So that means the force has to be perpendicular to that. You can use the numbers in the in the dimensions here so the dimensions on the structure to figure out what way that is and the angle of that of that force which ha turns out to be 41.6 degrees then let's see how many unknowns do we have this is the entire frame and we've got uh, or the entire uh, structure we've got all these different members making up the entire structure so this this member here one two three four five six forces on it, then what new forces do we have over here? 7, 8, 9, and no new forces on BCD, so 9 equations in 9 unknowns. We can solve it using our force equations. I'm not going to run through this one for you, but you can give it a shot for more practice, and here are the solutions. Okay, last topic today, machines. A simple machine is just a mechanical device for transmitting forces to obtain some uh, desired result. So uh, the analysis for these is just the same as it is for frames. Here's an example of a machine. So this is a scale. We can move this mass back and forth and we can use it to figure out how much, how much um, sand or sawdust or I don't know what you want. Maybe this is sugar we've got on the, on the scale over here. So there's a, there's a trick to analyzing this machine, which is to just do the torque equations about each of the pins to figure out what the distance x is. That'll save a little bit of time to find the distance x first, and then the force balance equations at each pin can be pretty quick. All right, we're not even going to use maple for that because this trick saves us so much time. So using torque balance equation at pin A, we can just write the uh, an equation here using the distances from above to figure out what the mem uh, tension in ED is, then in GF, then figure out what X is, solving those three equations, and now the six pin equations are just one equation and one unknown. And that's it.